This is a short video about um, section 4.2 about Euler's criteria in Stein's elementary number theory book in chapter 4. So what's the setup for Euler's criteria on here? So we're going to assume that P is an odd prime and that A is an integer that's not divisible by P. Now remember in this section 4.2 we've been talking about quadratic residues modulo P. Uh, and quadratic non-residues, and of course the Legendre symbol, which is kind of a tool that is one if a mod p is a quadratic residue, uh, or it's negative one if uh, a mod p is a quadratic non-residue. So what Euler's criterion is, is it's kind of a neat way to see if a is a quadratic residue mod p. So Euler's criterion says the Legendre symbol of a mod p is one. In other words, that says that a is a quadratic residue mod p. So just kind of shorthanding that. If and only if, so this is a characterization of what that means. If and only if a raised to the p minus 1 over 2 power is congruent to 1 mod p. This is the kind of thing that Euler is, you know, just famous for. He's a genius. He's got all these kind of statements about um, what can you say about this set of numbers based on, you know, this particular exponent, right? And so Again, based on this particular exponent here, this has uh, big ties to whether or not A is a quadratic residue mod P. It's very Euler. All right, so what's the proof of this look like? The proof of this utilizes a lot of modern algebra. I'll try to fill in some of the details within maybe what you might, um, what will come across, but don't feel like you really have to wrap your head around everything that we'll do um, that involves a lot of modern algebra in case you haven't had it. But I'll try to give you the details um, as we see them. So what's the proof of this look like? So I am going to look at this function here. So it's phi, and it goes from the group of units mod p. Remember, this is a group. Uh, and these are the units mod p, so the number is 1 through p minus 1. And the operation that I can do on these things is multiplication. So phi is a function from that to itself. And the way that we'll define phi here is phi of a should spit out a to the p minus 1 over 2, which is that power that I'm interested in. Now, it turns out that this phi is what's called a group homomorphism. And just to remind you, what does that mean? So the operation in both of these groups is multiplication. So to be a group homomorphism, phi has to satisfy the following. I need to make sure that phi of a times b should eventually be phi of a times phi of b. So in other words, phi should split. This should be similar to what we've seen because we saw that the Legendre symbol is a group homomorphism because the Legendre symbol of like a times b over p is equal to the Legendre symbol of a mod p times the Legendre symbol of b mod p. And remember that was lemma 4.1.4 that was in the previous video. So we're just going to try to utilize the same thing here just to get a handle on what this word means. What does phi do again? Phi takes your input and raises it to the p minus 1 over 2 power. So my input here is a over b. And so that would look like, well, a, I'm sorry, a times b, my bad. So a times b, we'll raise that to the p minus 1 over 2 power. But think about exponent rules. When you do that, um, it doesn't matter what order I multiply these integers in, so I can apply this exponent to each of them in the order that I see them. In particular, this is a raised to that power times b raised to that power. And now if you think about it, what if I just sneak these parentheses in here? That's this guy. That's what you'd get if you just plugged a into phi. And what if I sneak these parentheses in right here? That's what you'd get if you plug b into phi. So what have I got? phi of a times b, it definitely just split into phi of a times phi of b. So that's what it means for phi again to be a group homomorphism. Now, now we're going to bring in again, remember that we, we said the Legendre symbol also acts like a group homomorphism, and we're going to denote the function that sends an integer a to its Legendre symbol mod p is this function psi. So I've got these two functions that are these two cool looking Greek letters that we're playing with here, and now we're going to compare them. The next thing I need to tell you about is what does this KER thing mean? So any homomorphism has what's called a kernel. The kernel of a homomorphism consists of what are all the elements in the domain. So if I look at psi, the domain is this. What are all the elements in the domain that get sent to the identity over here in the codomain? Now figuring out what the identity is, that depends on what the group operation is. The group operation here in this set plus or minus one is one. I'm sorry, the group operation is multiplication, so the identity is one. So to kind of unpack, what does it mean for a to be in the kernel of psi? That means that psi of a should be one. I want to know what are all the things, what are all the elements of z mod p z star such that psi of a is equal to one. 
I want you to remember though, what did psi do to things again? Psi just says compute the Legendre symbol of A mod P. So what have I got? If A is in the kernel of psi, psi of A is equal to one, which is the same thing as saying the Legendre symbol of A mod P is equal to one. Remember that that says that A is a perfect square mod P. In other words, A is a quadratic residue. What does that mean? That means that there exists some B such that A is equal to B squared mod P. So there's some B such that A equals B squared mod P. Now what we wanna do is let's plug in that for A. Let's bring that back here. Psi of A, I'm sorry, that's phi, that's not psi. Phi of A looks like, by definition, here's what phi does, takes it to that nice power P minus one over two. Let's do a little substitution, all right? Here, I know that A equals B squared for some B, so I'll plug that in here. I'm gonna do B squared to the P minus one over two. You probably see, why is that cool? Well, because those twos cancel now. So I get this is B to the P minus one. What do I know B to the P minus one should be? B to the P minus one mod P? That's Euler's theorem, which tells me that this is equal to one. So remember, anything to the, uh, in this case, phi of P, what is phi of P? It's P minus one. So anything like X to the P minus one is always congruent to one mod P. Remember that's, uh, application of Euler's theorem. All right, so where are we at? So we've just made a connection between if we're in the kernel of psi, then phi of a, my other function, also gives me one. Well, wait a minute, think about what that says. If a is in the kernel of psi, then what I've highlighted here, that says that a is also in the kernel of phi. So I've got a subset proof here. When I start in the kernel of psi, I end up in the kernel of phi, that justifies that the kernel of psi is a subset of the kernel of phi. Pretty cool. So a lot about modern algebra so far, about homomorphisms and the kernel of a homomorphism. So far though, again, the things that uh, psi sends to the identity, that's just a subset of the things that phi sends to the identity. That's what I want you to think about so far. The things that psi sends to one, it's just a subset of the things that phi sends to one. Now, here's a big modern algebra fact. This is lemma 4.1.4, if you wanna go look at that. But the point here is that, maybe you've seen some modern algebra before and I'll just say it this way. I can consider this factor group that my domain z mod pz star modulo the kernel of psi. And the fact that that's isomorphic to this group that has two things in it, that tells me that this kernel of psi is somehow as big of a subgroup as possible of Z mod P Z star here because it has index two. So what should we have here? Well, the kernel of psi is as big of a subgroup as possible as the kernel of Z mod P Z star. Well, but wait a minute. The kernel of psi is also a subgroup of the kernel of phi. So what does that tell you about the kernel of phi? Well, that means that uh, the kernel of phi has to actually be equal to the kernel of psi or uh, phi just has to be the identity function, right? The thing that sends everything, well, really, sorry, it's not the identity function. This is essentially like the zero function. Like everything just gets sent to the identity. Everything just gets sent to one. It's that constant there. Cool. So that's, a, that's again, because if the kernel of psi is already a subgroup that's as big as possible in Z mod PZ star, then anything containing it either has to be equal to it or it has to just be the whole darn, whole darn group itself, C mod PZ star. That is what these two things say in symbols. Now what we'll do is we'll think about what are these two cases. Let's think about the latter case here. So if phi happens to just be the thing that always sends elements to one, so that's kind of like the zero function, everything just gets sent to that constant one, the identity here. Well then let's think about this polynomial, x to the P minus one over two minus one. How many roots should it have? Well, if, if phi is one, then everybody, every A in that group just gets sent to one. So every A would be a solution to this. When you plug in A for X, it would be a solution. Well, wait a minute, how many A's are there? There's P minus one of those A's, but take a look here. I'm saying there's P minus one roots of this polynomial of degree less than that, P minus one over two. 
that's a problem whenever we're in this field z mod pz that's a problem for like real numbers too right i can't have like a quadratic equation that has like 17 roots over the real numbers and like z mod pz it behaves in a similar way right the number of roots you have is definitely bounded by the degree of the polynomial so that'd be a contradiction so it can't be the case that phi is just equal to one here so it must be the case that's impossible it must be the case that the kernel of phi and the kernel of psi must be equal now wait a minute <laughs> what did we just say if you're in the kernel of psi the legendre symbol of a mod p is one that's the same thing as being in the kernel of phi which says that phi of a which for the last time is this expression here is equal to one so we just proved that those two sets are equal therefore this happens if and only if this happens now there's this a neat way to i mean this gives you actually a nice way to figure out what is the Legendre symbol of a mod p. Um, and I mean, you know, there's already the built-in function in Sage that does it for me too. But uh, what we're going to do is we're going to define, we're going to use Euler's criterion here to help me out here. So I'll define this function, kr a comma p. Think about kr probably stands for kernel, I'm guessing. Um, but what should it do? So if I take a mod p and I raise it to the p minus 1 and then cut it in half, p minus 1 over 2 power, if that's identically equal to 1 already, then I should just get 1, right? That means, by Euler's criterion, if this happens, that means a is a quadratic residue, that means that the Legendre symbol is 1, therefore, I want it to return 1. Otherwise, you should return negative 1. In other words, if you raise it to this power here, and you don't get 1, then you're not a quadratic residue. And then what we'll do here is this little for loop right here. It just says, all right, let's do this for the first few. Let's do this for a in range one to five. And let's do this, say, for each a mod five. And like we've seen before, I know that one and four are the only quadratic residues. And what do I see? That this new function captures that exact same information here. That one and four are the quadratic residues mod five, whereas two and three are quadratic non-residues. Again, because it's computing the Legendre symbol here. So this is just, again, another way to think about how to compute the Legendre symbol. All right, then the last thing in this section that I'll, that I'll mention here is a corollary to that, to Euler's criterion, to that big theorem. And so another way to, to think about the above is this equation, it's really like this congruence here, x squared is equivalent to a mod p, that has no solution if and only if, well, a to the p minus one over two is congruent to minus one mod p. And uh, what does that tell me? That tells me that the Legendre symbol is always just gonna be whatever a to the p minus one over two is, modulo p. So the Legendre symbol is always going to be related to a to this power modulo p here.